Audio. Good to go. All right. Sync. <laughs>
like it wasn't like my life was bad before. Yeah. But my grades got better. My relationships improved. Um, I started a business in college, and all of a sudden, it just started to everything was just like in flow. And I was yeah. Like, Man, the heavens didn't open up for me. Buddha didn't appear. <laughs> yeah, Jesus yeah. didn't talk to me. But I'm like, there's something to this meditation thing. Yeah. And uh, whatever it is, like uh, I want to, I want to want more of it. Yeah. So um, that was pretty cool, and, and that was kind of put me on that first path where I realized what happened in the hospital, where I realized I was more than my body. Yeah. Whatever was happening in meditation, I was kind of like touching into whatever yeah. whatever that was. Started tapping into like started the spiritual ta- side or yeah, something. Yeah. Started right? ta- tapping into the power of you know what the greater part of you is. Yeah. And so um, after college, I sold the business that I'd started. Um, what you what, what kind of business was that? It was uh, just a simple business of vending machines. Okay. Yeah, but while I was in college, with all the vending machines around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I grew I mean, at a college, started on a credit card, yeah, and grew yeah, a yeah. thing to like a hundred accounts, and then sold it after college. But then I went. Um, I really one of the books we read in that meditation class was this thing called Autobiography of a Yogi. It was about India and the whole spiritual culture of India, and mm-hmm. I was like, man, there's some crazy stuff going on over there. So strapped on a backpack after I'd sold the business and went to India for a few months and went ashram shopping, hopping, ashram hopping and meditated with like yogis down in the jungle in South India and then went up to the Himalayas and then ended up in Japan. Then come first full circle, um, I spent some time in San Diego learning to teach meditation because I was like, whatever this is, cool, this is, it's cool. Yeah. I, want, I want to teach this to other people. You know, it's funny is I never, I never realized how you know spiritual you were until that time at at one of the intensives mm. when you led one of the uh, meditation classes mm. yeah and that was kind of the first time i'm like man i didn't i didn't know that about Brady. yeah you know, i remember it was it was really cool you led this whole meditation thing and that was i think one of my first times ever experiencing that cool it's pretty awesome yeah, yeah, yeah so that that um i i wanted to like well I'm like whatever this is i want to share it with other people yeah. and not because i wanted to make a million dollars from it because that wasn't that wasn't it i just i knew it was good so um, started doing some of that, and then when I came back from that trip to uh, India, um, ended up kind of getting connected with Tony Robbins. Um, ended up going through his programs, and uh, got an invitation basically to come work for him. Wow. And so, uh, spent two years like traveling the road with Tony Robbins. Did you uh, get to meet him? Oh yeah, and hang out with him and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, every 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 city we'd fly into, we'd be there a couple days early. He'd come in, he'd do some training with us. Yeah. Then we'd do the he'd do the three day weekend event. We'd do the fire walk. So I walked on fire more times than I could count. Only burned my feet like twice. Yeah. Not bad. Um, What's and, he like, man? Like when you actually have a little one on one time? Because I've been I've been to the uh, Unleash the Power Within twice and walked on fire twice, and it was pretty. Oh, cool. cool. And he's you know super high energy and all yeah. that stuff. But is he like that all the time, he's, or like he's pretty much like that all the time. Oh, that's you know? crazy. Yeah. He's pretty much like that all the time. Um, it was a great experience working for him. So two years working for him on the road, uh, then left working for him in 99, and then started a financial services business uh, from 99 to 2005. Grew that and sold it in 2005, not really knowing what I was going to do next. And my wife got pregnant with our first kid. Yeah. And... Uh, she was starts tapping her toe. She's like, "All right, what are you gonna do?" <laughs> and my lot in that financial services business, I worked a lot with um, clients who had lots of real estate. My best clients own lots of real estate. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, Tony Robbins says success leaves clues, right? Yeah. So it's like you, you, you don't need to see it too many times. You're like, okay, this guy like UPS driver, 55 years old, owns 10 rentals, mostly paid off, has 15,000 a month in passive income and a net worth of like three million bucks. Yeah. Not a doctor or lawyer, like yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, and saw that over and over and over again. So I'm like, okay, let's focus on real estate. <clears throat> but I got in, um, not the best time. Got in in 2000, started I think it was late 2007. Oh uh, yeah, and bad I, timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, but it actually worked out to my advantage, I think. Um, yeah, so I got into mortgage actually when I started because yeah. I, I my general idea about real estate agents, I hadn't bought or sold a house yet. But I was just like, realtors, man, I don't think I want to be a realtor. You yeah. know, I work weekends, be the guy on the bus benches. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no. Nah. Um, so I, I'll do mortgage. And I got into mortgage, and uh, w- within about three months after I got my mortgage li- my yeah. license and started doing mortgages, 
Bear Stearns collapsed. Every other day, a new mortgage company was going down. Mm -hmm. And unless you'd been in the mortgage business for like 20 years and you had all the contacts and, yeah. stuff, and you really knew how to do mortgages well, could you even get anything done? Yeah. So, um, but w how I ended up with real estate was during the process of building, building the mortgage business. Yeah. My mentor was like, look, if you want to be good in mortgage, you want to get, get aligned with top realtors. Yeah. And uh, here's a list of the top 100. Like, I suggest you go and get face to face with as many of them as you can. Yeah. So during that process of building the mortgage book, I actually sat down with 42 of the top 100 agents in the county. Yeah. Took me two and a half months, but two things happened. One is I realized, man, some of these people in um, real estate actually, like the top agents, yeah. they're pretty cool people. Yeah. They make great money. They got a good lifestyle. They're smart. They're successful. Maybe I could do this real estate thing. And so when, when life kind of pushed me in that direction, when you couldn't do mortgages anymore, yep. one of the top agents I was working with was this guy, Dave Keefe, um, at Keller Williams at the time. He was a top agent at Keller Williams. And he's like, man, what? You, you, I like you. You're sharp. You're humble. You got hustle. Yeah. Why don't you come on my team? And so I, I thought about you know going as a solo agent, but then I, I fell back to remembering what Tony Robbins talks about. And that is, you know, if you want to master something, like find somebody who's crushing it in that particular area or niche. Yeah. M copy or model their mindset model. and then model their activities. Yep. You model their mindset and you model their activities, you're going to get the same results. Yeah. So I'm like, I could go as a solo agent, right? And probably do three, four, five deals. Maybe my first year if I was trying to figure it out on your own. Figure right? it out, <laughs> right? Or I could jump on a team yeah. and, and see if I can accelerate that learning. So I did 12 deals my first uh year in the business for 12 million, high price point at the time, yeah, because I was focusing on duplexes and investors. Um, but that was my, my start, man. And I, um, the second year in the business, the guy who was my mentor decided, you know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave, he was gonna leave selling real estate. He was gonna go build houses. Wow. 2008 wasn't a good year to go do that. Yeah. But nonetheless, he took off. And so I was like, all right, I got to figure this thing out. What's next? What's next? And we were right at the peak of the short, or the start, I'm sorry, not the peak, the start of the short sale wave. Yeah. And uh, I had a gal who came to me in my real estate investor group. She's like, I have two of these houses. I'm going to dental school. I want to sell them, but I, I owe more than they're worth. Yeah. And I rent rooms out in one and I live in the other and I rent some rooms out in that one. Can you help me? And I was like, I haven't done these short sales before, but I have uh, worked with foreclosures because in my financial services business, we did hard money loans at one point yeah. and I had to take a property back. So I knew the foreclosure process. Anyway, I got the first one done, uh, first short sale done for her in like five weeks. The second one I got done in like six weeks. And then the title company called me. They're like, hey, what are you doing? Because <laughs> we're starting to see a bunch of these short sales stack up at yeah. our offices because we haven't seen them since the 90s. But they're, most agents are taking three, four, five, six months to get them done, and you got these done pretty quick. Like, yeah. would you be willing to teach a class with our, our escrow officer on short mm -hmm. sales? I'm like, um, you know, I, I'm not an expert, but yeah. I'll share what I know. And that's usually the place that like you mentioned, the kind of where I come from. Yeah. Um, I, I've always just stood on the shoulders of other giants. I'm not the smartest kid in class. I just sit next to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I've always done very well by just finding somebody who's like the Tony Robbins principle of modeling, finding somebody who's excelling and succeeding in a certain area. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then finding out what they do and how they think. And, and so if I didn't do that same thing back for other yeah. people, I, you know, I'd be, I don't know, I just didn't feel right. You know? So anyway, I come from that place of just wanting to share. Uh, we taught a few of those short sale classes for the title company by the end of a month. I had, um, at the end of every one of those classes I taught, I had 20 agents come to me, here's my card. Yeah. I got a short sale coming up. Like, you deal with the bank, I'll deal with the homeowner, and we'll split the, split the deal. Yeah. So my second month and my second year, I had 50 short sale listings. Man. <laughs> yeah. now, <laughs> that's crazy how yeah. that worked out, man. Well, the thing too that's funny is, if you remember those short sales, like, they weren't easy to get done. No, they it, weren't Yeah, at all. the amount of time that it took, you had to go call the bank and you'd sit on hold for two hours yeah. at Wells Fargo or B of A for every single file. Yep. I had a new problem. I had 50 short sales and now like, okay, it's one me. Yeah. And I got to sit on hold for 100 hours a week. I can't get anything done. You need a team now or something. That right? was it. That was the first iteration <laughs> of a real estate team. Started, um, ran a Craigslist ad, yeah. you know, got a bunch, trained up a bunch of short sale processors and built the short sale processing company. Um, 
But then, you know, uh, kind of had that from 2009, 10, knowing that the short sale market would go down. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I got into real estate, I did read Gary Keller's book. I started at Keller Williams. Yeah. That always made sense to me. You know, yeah. like this model, like not just having me selling houses, but trying to build a real business. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, at any point during that time, did you say like, like real estate is what I want to do, like going forward? Or were you still kind of, because you went from your vending machine to the financial services, you had the spiritual side to you, Tony yeah. Robbins, right? And then... Man, did you ever make yeah, that decision at all yeah, during that time? Yeah, that's actually a great question, man. Yeah. Because um, what ended up happening in the beginning, I, I, real estate was a means to an end for me. Yeah. Like as I once I decided on real estate, hey, this is my next gig. Yeah. I was doing it for the money. Yeah. And uh, what ends up happening in this business, if you do it for the money, you'll hit a ceiling faster than you know. Mm-hmm. And because the money will come quickly. And you've probably seen this when, like, I coach or mentor new agents. Yeah. Uh, and you bring them into your world and you have lots of opportunity flowing around. And you help that guy or gal one month close three, four, five sales and they make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in a month. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, like, they lose their mojo. Yeah. Because everyone has an unconscious idea, right, of what they really, they unconsciously think they deserve. And when they exceed that, then they just, they, they kind of slow down yeah. and they're not even trying to. It's funny you say that because there was a point, my story is very similar to yours, you know, going through the whole short sale, we were doing low mods and there was a point where we were like making so much money and I was pretty young and I got to a point where I, t where I told my, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, I was like, this is kind of boring now. Like I'm not getting a thrill out of this. At first it was about the money, yeah. but then the money was coming in and like there wasn't really any fun to it like there had to be something bigger or something more like what's the next level that I can go to to still have that mojo like you said right yeah. otherwise you start to lose that fire you know what I mean if it's, totally. if it's coming too easy it's like well there's no challenge in it yeah you know you gotta have you gotta have that that why that's bigger than money that's what um I, because yeah it's 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 easy to make 200 300 400 thousand dollars a year in real estate yeah and especially once, out here out here yeah. yeah I mean sell 15 you know 10 15 20 houses a year and you're there and um and it doesn't take a lot of effort to do that. Yeah. I mean, it takes some skill, but um, you do have to find a reason bigger than money. So for me, um, what ended up happening was I started building a real estate team uh, after the short sale wave came out. And, um, and my goal originally when I got into real estate was like, okay, I, here's my plan. I'm going to make money in real estate. I figured it was a good way for me to get my eyes on lots of potential deals. Mm -hmm. I might be able to buy as investments. I'll buy investment property and get it to the point where that passive income is coming in, you know, and basically I covers my expenses and then I can retire and I'll yeah. go do coaching and teach meditation. Right. And so, um, that plan didn't work out so well. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know say, what you mean, man. <laughs> when you, when you pursue something just for money, um, you, end, you do end up hitting the wall Yeah. and I hit the wall and, uh, what it looked like was I just, I hit a plateau. We, we got to about, I don't know, about a million in GCI for the team, yeah. you know? And as you're building a real estate team for anybody listening, when you when you go to build a team, one of the things you gotta you gotta just make peace with is that when you go to go from being a solo producer to building a team, your profitability is gonna go down. Yeah. So you will end up having to do more to earn the same amount of money. Yeah. And and that 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 no man's land is probably from like 30 deals to like 70 deals. Yeah. Where of deals 40, 50, you're not really making much money than you were working by yourself at 30. Yeah. And um to to really get up past 70, you got to have a pretty like high um high functioning, high performance, high efficiency team or group. Yeah. And that requires culture and culture requires heart yeah and heart is not about money yeah so if it's about the money you'll just never get there and that's what happened we hit a plateau about like 60 deals a year yeah and um and i was frustrated i was like man maybe i should just go back to being a solo agent because i can crank out 30 or 40 deals and make more money right? yeah but it, i knew that wasn't what i really wanted to do with the business um i i, I wanted to grow and then actually one of our coaches, man, the guy that we had uh, both, we met, I think, through Lars Hedenborg, yeah. Real Estate B-School. He, um, he did a workshop on e -Myth. He's like, hey, come on out, Brad. This is actually before I coached with him. Dude. He's like, come on out. I'm doing this two-day thing. We're going to do a deep dive in e -Myth. And the first part of that book is really about like why you do what you do as a business owner. Yeah. 
and the exercise we did about like uh, imagine your funeral who's there yeah i remember that one dude yeah. that was a hard one yeah <laughs> right like you're writing your own eulogy or writing your own right? eulogy remember that yeah that shit it's gets deep. real dude it's deep <laughs> but then what, what i'm just curious what came up for you on that thing i i actually did that with my team we had our, our you know quarterly um you know one of our quarterly strategy. strategy meetings and that was one of our exercises and it was an emotional process like a couple of people on my team started crying and like uh, it was just weird but taken away from what Lars said is at the end of the day it's not about how many homes you sell no right like yeah, that's no, not going to be on your tombstone like this no. guy sold a thousand homes like right? dude, it, yeah if something you got hit by a bus tomorrow and i showed up at you for i wouldn't be like dude enrique man that guy like crushed it sold so many houses yeah that would be the last thing yeah and if, and if that's all people remember you by then i don't really think you're doing a good job you yeah know what i mean so i think for me it was that that is part of the motivation like to build a team and impact the people on my team and how you take care of your clients and all that stuff because it's not it's not about the end you know the homes and the money it's like about that whole process that whole journey and totally all the things that happen along the way yeah but that, that was a breakthrough moment for me because i like we hit this plateau in the team and i went and we did that exercise you know it's your funeral write your eulogy and mine you know what were people saying and we're like man brett was an awesome guy he, like helped me grow and like learn and and it distilled it all down it was live love learn grow help other people do the same yeah like that was you asked at the beginning of this podcast, who's Brett Jennings? Like, that's who I am. I want to help you. I, I want to live, love, you know, live fully, you know, learn like there's, like I live forever. Uh, love like, you know, you've never been hurt, I guess is what that saying is. Yeah. And then grow uh, just because the more, the, the bigger you become, the more impact and help you can do for other people. Yeah. That was clear to me. But then the thing he asked after that was, all right, now, if that's who you are, what does your business look like if you brought all of who you are to your business and mm. everything that you do. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm mean, gonna like this coaching thing. I wanna help people grow. I, I definitely would be coaching my people. Yeah. And I was like kind of coaching my agents at that time. Yeah. But I didn't really have agents who wanted to grow. Yeah. Like, I mean, I had built an organization of probably what I call B players, mm -hmm. maybe a couple C players around me, <clears throat> not people who are committed to being and doing their best every day. Yeah. And so that was evident. And interestingly enough, as soon as I made that decision, we were at that retreat with Lars. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a two-day vacation tacked on the back end of that with my family. We went to Tahoe. I'm in Tahoe. I get the first phone call. This guy's like, hey, Brett, uh, you know things? I'm just not really digging the team. I think I'm going to leave the team. I'm like, all right. Well, this was a guy who was kind of like, he was kind of a jerk, and he did, definitely didn't want to grow. I was like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. And then uh, Monday, I get into the office, and one of the guys, he actually was a pretty good producer, the guy, the guy that I like, you know, he, he rolls, he's a friend, I need to talk to you. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh shit, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, um, I've been thinking about it and, you know, the team's not working out for me. And Steven and I, the one guy who was on the team, we're, 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 we're going to do this thing and we're going to buy, buy some websites and we're going to generate some leads. We figured we can just do this thing. Then. I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, okay. Um, so pretty much the whole team was like, just imploded yeah. as far as from the salespeople. But it was almost like God said, you know what? You need help. You want to build a new sandcastle? Let me help you with that. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think that is, though? Do you think it was that you didn't have the right people to be begin with, that, you know, on mm -hmm. the team? Or you I were, wasn't clear. You weren't so clear on who you needed to I, have. I wasn't team. clear on the purpose of my business, right? Like, my business was there. I had goals to make money. Yeah. Um, and some ideas about what I wanted the team to look like. But, like, that whole thing about really getting clear on your why, mm -hmm. and you dial that thing down, that becomes, like, a, a generative force uh, of creation, right? Of what you're creating in your business. Yeah. So that seemed to be the thing. Cause what happened next was I had a guy I knew that was like seven years in the business roll up and he's like, Hey dude, um, I've been watching your success and you're pretty much like every year you do more and better and more and better. And he's like, I'm just coming off a divorce. I really want to get better in my real estate. I want to be a better dad. He's like, I think you can help me get there. Yeah. I was like, let's go yeah and then 90 days like 60 to 90 days later another guy showed up and he was like hey you know i i, I just watched from afar seeing what you're up to i want to i want to i want to be better i want to do it so yeah i didn't do any recruiting it was all passive attraction and yeah. then so the right people because i just got clear on the purpose um, and you think you were you people. were being you were being the type of ind individual that would attract those people yeah right? yeah the whole like be do have right it's exactly if you're being that person, then all the stuff all starts falling, stuff in, starts place, falling right? in place. 
So that's one of the things we do now um, is with our agents. We do an exercise once they get clear on the vision for their life. It's something called future self. And it's basically, all right, these are the goals for your life and your business. Who do you have to be to have all that stuff show up? Yeah. And like, what's the, what's that person like spiritually? What's that person like physically? What's that person like with their family and their relationships? What's that person like financially? Seven and equities. It, yeah, right. right. And, and then looking at those things and creating a vision for who that person needs to be. Yeah. Um, and that's actually helped some of my people break through kind of like a, a ceiling. Yeah. I have, so I've had some guys who kind of got stuck in a ceiling and yeah. one of my guys grew up poor and he's like, you know, that's, I'm making more, way more money than I ever thought I ever would. Yeah. But he wants to go to the next level. And, yeah. and as soon as he got clear on who he needed to be, um, he did the same thing. You laminate it, you stick it in your shower, you see it every day and mm -hmm. like all those little things start showing up and like becoming true. Yeah. And um, so anyway, he's having, he's having a great, great business, great year, great life. It's crazy because... You know, like I wasn't trained. I've I've just been in this process of the last few years. A lot of it due due to Lars's coaching, open opening me up to like self improvement and all that stuff. But there's so many people who are just going about life like not really knowing who they are or who they want to be. It's just not clear. But just these simple exercises of just writing stuff down mm -hmm. and getting clear on who you want to be, uh, what your future self is. No, it's like it's game changing, man. Totally. It's, and that's I mean, you know, not to be uh, well, no, I mean, yeah, that's the, the gift and opportunity that we have, you know, I think as, as leaders in our own organizations and our own local community and connecting with the people that we like and care about, like to, to expose them to that stuff mm -hmm. and, and open them up to it because, um, yeah, I mean, dude, the, the, the people who you, you said you did the, the eulogy exercise with, you yeah. know, like they're going to remember you in that process because that touched them in some way and mm -hmm. opened them up. So. I think that's that's the role that we have is to help people go to the next level by you know uncovering more, helping them discover more who they really are. Yeah. So picking up on that is, you know, you've had the successes obviously in in building your team and mm -hmm. in real estate and all that. And I remember when we talked the other day after we after our conversation, our, our little lunch meeting. Um, you know, you're someone who I look up to, and I'm like, you know, I I want to you know take some of those qualities and bring them into my team. But I driving home, I realized like. You're going through a lot of the same issues and same pain points, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that I'm going through. And, you know, you're saw like on a, probably on a bigger scale, right? But the journey's not easy, like either way, man. It's like whether you're in the beginning of your journey, in the middle, or in the, you know, if you're at the top already, there's we're going through a lot of the same shit, right? There's no top, man. Yeah. That's the thing. There's no top, right? There's always another level. Yeah. There's always another level, but but the the experience of the struggle is different at at every level, I think. Um, but you know, if you don't have a vision, what is it like? I mean, I guess it's something from the from from the Bible. But I, 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 the quote I remember is from Martin Luther King. You know, it's like when there when there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. You know, and it's like you need something to pull you, something bigger to pull you through. Uh, but yeah, the struggles the struggles are there. Um, I mean, what are some of the, what are some of the pain points you're having right now, like with your team? You you've gotten up to. You said you were gonna do like almost two hundred million in, in sales this year. I mean, yeah. Anybody else looks at that like, man, this guy is super successful, man. Like, yeah. what? What are some of the issues you go through right now? Yeah. You know? I mean, my, my biggest <clears throat> struggle at this stage of the business is trying to replace myself. You know, at at, at, a, at every level. I first replace when you grow a real estate team. You know, for those of you guys who are or thinking about building a real estate team, the um, first leverage point, right, is just getting an assistant. You get to twenty four deals. It's hard to go past that without having somebody manage or take over a lot of the little administrative stuff. You have that assistant. Then you get to about 36 deals and then you're like, realize, man, my time's maxed out with buyers. Yeah. So you either get a showing assistant or a buyer's agent. And then when you get to about 50 deals with that buyer's agent, you want to do more listings. You're going to need help on the listing side and really growing it. So finding those people and building the team was the first part. But um, that, that uh, my greatest challenge it is probably... Um, actually it's me, dude, it's letting go. It's letting go. It's like once I do have somebody who is capable and skilled, you know, and training them, empowering them, and then being able to say, all right, man, you got this. I'm gonna let go of the reins. Yeah. It's your baby um, now. <laughs> it's like your baby, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, that's, that's probably the, the greatest challenge that I have. Um, you know, the most recently it was after the team was built. Now I wanted to go from five agents to 15 agents. 
I realized I was going to need somebody to help me like manage sales. Yeah. Really, because um, there's only so many one-on-ones that I have time to do. I'm still doing a little bit of production. Yeah. Because uh, one, I love working with clients. I love still getting belly to belly with the with people and meeting at the kitchen table and having conversations about life. Dude, do I you still get a kick out of that? Like working I with do. clients. I do, and I think the sk- the skills of life coaching and coaching in general translate really well to real estate because yeah. come on, come on, look at it. Like what are you doing is you're helping people is buying and selling. Yeah. Like you're coaching them on a goal. They're like, well, you yeah. want to buy a house and they got a fear and like you got to move them past their fear and their limiting beliefs. Yeah. And so it's it's a coaching conversation yeah. and that's why I think, um, I didn't realize it, but that's why real estate was perfect for me. And so, um, but it's cool now because I, my way I see it is I'm building this business, started out as a team, now it's a brokerage, we launched real estate experts. Um, cascading the value of what I built in a team mm-hmm. out on a little bit bigger scale. Yeah. So, uh, but the core, the way I see what, what my company is, is we're a marketing and coaching company. Well, actually a real estate company, but yeah. you know, when I sit back and look at it, we marketing company, we generate lots of leads and opportunities. Coaching company, I help coach agents on really becoming world-class at, mm-hmm. at, at knowing the market and and selling their craft yeah. and helping people. Um, we coach them to be really efficient and effective. And um, so I have a marketing and coaching company that helps agents produce more than they could on their own. Mm. That's uh, that's the way I see it. So it's it's cool, but the challenges are there, man. It's, it's really about, um, for me, it's about letting go and getting the right people in place so that I can just focus on my sweet spot to where just coaching. Yeah. And that's, uh, I'm close, I'm close. We got a great sales manager in place now and she's pretty mad. Got it. So is that, that's the next level, so to say, for you, is to be able to get to a point where you can just only coach or... Yeah, I think so. I think so. Or coach because you want to, not because Co- you have to. Correct. Or, right? Yeah. Coach because I want to, not because I have to, and, and, and scale out of production more and more. Yeah. And I realize as long as I keep that purpose in mind, the right people keep showing up. You know, we, we, we've got a, a candidate that um, we're probably gonna be hiring here soon. And she was a listing agent for Redfin, did like 35, 36 deals, perfect person that just wants to focus and work on sellers. And yeah. She doesn't need to make a million dollars a year, but I, I'm happy to coach people to make a million dollars a year. I had our first agent this year made a million a year, made a million this year. That's awesome. What does that feel like, man, where you can now that's, do it for, what's for someone else? That's cool, paying it forward, man. Um, that's what I'm. That's what the next level is for me. I think yeah. it's it's about kind of helping people do what I did. You know, um, so I'm helping agents, solo agents become if they're really good, help them become top agents. Helping top agents build teams. Yeah. And uh, and then go you know go go to that next level and be able to, to, you know, just like you are, man, with your team. Yeah. You know, you're helping these people who just got a handle on real estate become successful in real estate. Yeah. It just feels awesome. What do you think? What do you think in the industry right now, I guess, what are some of the things that get to you? What do you think is wrong with the industry right now or the state of the, <laughs> the real estate and the salesperson and all that? Give me your perspective because yeah. you have a good, good pulse on the market. Yeah, I think real estate um, is massively going to change you know, in the next uh, 12 to maybe even 24 months, but for sure 12 to 36 months. Mm-hmm. I think 30 to 50% of the agents in the business will not be in the business anymore. Um, I think the market is... Why is that? Um, because consumers deserve more. Consumers deserve more. We've, we've had an industry that, you know, the associations that were supposed to elevate us as agents, as a professional group, have really held us back because they they uh, cater to the lowest common denominator and they set the standards so low yeah. because they're membership-based organizations based on collecting fees. They just want lots and lots of people. Yeah. And that's not what is best for the consumer. The consumers are best served, man, by, by sharp, committed people like you, like me, like the people we, we lead um, that, that um, care about their clients, that are smart about the market, can really help them make sound financial decisions, uh, especially here in Silicon Valley, man. The yeah. average home being over a million dollars. It's a lot of money. It's yeah. a big investment. Yeah. You know, you, you, you screw up on execution and somebody loses three, four, five percent, that's 30, 40, 50 grand. Um, that could be all their money, <laughs> their whole nest egg right there. No, right? no totally. So, so I think um, consumers deserve more. The other thing is technology. You know, this this industry has been protected by the by the boards of realtors, by the MLSs. You know, and Zillow was the first big disruptor to come in and yeah. and and get you know ch- start changing the game. Yeah, and um, I welcome it, man. I welcome it. The change is good, and uh, 
but I think we're going to see a change. The number of agents is going to drop. We're going to see what happened with stock finance. We're going to see what happened with travel. You know, stock brokers are gone. Mm -hmm. You've got a low cost do it yourself model like Scott Trade, E Trade, Ameritrade. Yeah. Robin Hood. I have a Robin Hood app, man. You yeah. can make, make stock right there, right? Just make picture your stocks for you, right? Yeah. But if you got a $10 million portfolio, you're probably not going to manage it on Robin Hood, right? That's true. So, like, <laughs> that where the stakes are high, then you're gonna want a human involved. And I think um, that's good news for us as agents. Yeah. That means we elevate our, we, you know, the best agents are gonna stay in the business. Yeah. And they're gonna get elevated. And the not so great agents are gonna get taken out by Redfin and yeah. Open Door or whatever these kind of low cost, do it yourself. It's like the wealth gap. The yeah. rich get richer and the poor get poorer, unfortunately, right? It's probably the same thing with the agents, the not so good ones. Sweet out. Yeah, but I mean, it, it really comes down to the people who are committed to growing. Mm -hmm. People are committed to learning. The committed to people are people are committed to being their best and doing their best for their clients are the ones in this economy, whether it's real estate or anything, right? Yeah. That's just the new, like Tony Robbins talks about standards and, and what is it? It's like good, great, and outstanding. Yeah. It's like... The standards are being raised. Yeah. The, the pressures, the competitive pressures that we experience in our world are just calling us yeah. all to go to the next level. Yeah. And I think that's cool, man. I think so, it's good. Yeah. We, it's, we need that. Great. If you're up for the challenge. Yeah. But being up for the challenge is just a decision. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, if the people feel the pressure, it's like, oh, come on, let's bring it. It's going to happen with or without you. So yeah. you got to embrace it's it. It's going. You got to embrace it. So what do, what do we do as as agents and leaders and, you know, to kind of, to combat that or to remain relevant, you know, as the market starts to, you know, change. Yeah, I think it's 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 um, it's being learning based. You know, the growth mindset uh, and being learning based growth mindset, right? Is that like fail forward, fail fast? There is no failure. There's only yeah. learning. Yeah. Um, and being willing and oriented towards, um, you know, just just seeing what's ahead and learning what's next and and constantly being on that leading edge. Of, of what's happening, but that's where life is, man. That's where life is alive. Yeah. You know, it's like where things are learning and growing and I don't know. Yeah. Awesome stuff, man. I, uh, I really enjoyed this time with you. I got one last question for you before we wrap it up. Sure. Uh, this is kind of the, the little, the last Hail Mary there. So if you could go back in time to when you were younger, um, any stage in your life and kind of either do things over or tell yourself something when you're going through a struggle, Knowing what you know now and all the stuff you've been through and, and where you're at, your successes and stuff, what what would you say to yourself or what would you do differently? Or would you do anything differently? Yeah. Uh, what would my my future self or my current self say to my younger self? Yeah, there you go. You're enough, man. You're more than enough. You always were more than enough. Like you were, yeah, I, I that, that you are enough. You know, I think, uh, Every human being, one of the, we have two primary fears, right? That one, that we're not enough and that we won't be loved. Um, but knowing that you're enough, uh, being able to own your value and know that you, you're a gift, you're a miracle, man. Yeah. Like sperm and egg hit together, <laughs> all this food wrapped around it, and then all of a sudden it becomes a person and that's you. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's no accident. It's no, yeah. you're, it's no accident. And, uh. So I, I think that's it to be able to know that. Um, that's an interesting question, man. I was wondering when you were, you were, you were doing the wind up. Here comes this question. <laughs> Here comes the question. Here comes the question. <laughs> but that, I think that's it. Because I, I know a lot of what drove me initially was that feeling that I wasn't enough. Yeah. Like going back to that kid in that neighborhood, right? Yeah. Right, when she poked me in the chest and goes, oh, you, my mom says you rent your house. <laughs> and all the people in the neighborhood being like, yeah. oh, well, you, there's some kind of delinquent lives down yeah. the street. <laughs> And I, I told myself, you know what? I'm going to show you, like, success. I deserve success just as much as the next guy. So that was what initially drove me. And that's great because you channeled that into something positive. positive. Right. Well, the cool thing, the interesting thing about it is it come full circle, you know. Uh, that girl poked me in the chest, right? And she said something to say about, like, uh, you, you don't own a home and you don't deserve a home. Yeah. And I ended up landing squarely in a profession like blessing people with home ownership, right? <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah. And then I realized like, and, and, then, and then the other part of it is like, I ended up selling some of the most expensive homes in the county that, or these houses that lived on my street. Yeah. And some of these people that as a kid, I was kind of afraid to 
talk to you because I didn't feel right about it. Yeah. But now those people became friends and clients. And so it's all come kind of first full circle, man. Yeah. And, uh, and all because, you know, just I felt like I needed to be more. Yeah. I wanted to be more. And that's going to get you so far, man. But now to get to the next level, yeah. that's where you got to let all that go, right? And find, totally. find the, the bigger why after that, right? Yeah. Helping other people. All right, man. Well, I think we hit it, dude. Appreciate awesome, you coming bro. out, bro. Yeah, I really enjoyed it's it. Inspiring, man. Cheers to all your success, man. Keep Likewise. Going. Anything I can do to help you, let me know. All right, bro. Inspired me, man. Give me the goosebumps at the end. Let's go.